And, and Brian, my screen is visible to you? Your screen is, in fact, visible. What you might want to do is um, you could increase it to cover the whole screen. Okay. In your upper left? It's not covering the whole screen? Um, oh, you know what? It's probably just me. In technology, here we go. All right, I got it. All right, guys. Um, <laughs> Brian Stevens here once again uh, with the National Real Estate Post. And I've got Tom Hutchins over here uh, with Angel Oak. And we're going to be talking about subprime, Alte, all these nasty words that we had heard over previous years. Um, <clears throat> now, a couple of things that I want to point out is that um, the products that we're going to be going over – are products that are starting to be re-embraced as they should be by our industry. I think in, in years past, there's been a fear to embrace Alte or what we would call subprime over here because there was concerns of regulatory enforcement. And I think a lot of that is waned. The truth of the matter is, is the products that Angel Oak is offering are products that are filling the void for borrowers who can, should, and uh, would buy houses if they, in fact, had the opportunity to. So now I think we've had a lot of response to this webinar uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, one of them is is the changing nature of where the industry is right now. Uh, I can throw statistics out at you and tell you how refinances, refinances have gone down, uh, how they're going to continue to go down, which means lenders and real estate agents really need to look at a purchase market approach if they want to succeed and, in fact, ex excel in 2017. Um, that is not a statement of opinion. I believe that to be a statement of fact. And I think that's a lot of reason why folks are here right now. But what's exciting for me is a lot of borrowers who've been on the outside looking in now have opportunities to buy houses uh, because of companies like Angel Oak. And I, I just really applaud these guys for what they're doing right now. Uh, they're helping a lot of folks. Um, I think their products and their business model and who these guys are is just improving by the day. It's a great company to uh, do business with. Over here at the National Real Estate Post, we constantly hear positive feedback about what these guys are doing. And it's not only a matter of um, going out and finding some of these Alte borrowers, but it's actually getting people into loans who you were declining just a couple of years ago. So, Tom, I want to start with this whole thing, and I want to talk about some of these non-QM borrowers. And really the question becomes is how do we find them? How do we find the non-QM borrowers and, uh, you know, make these, you know, homeowners? What do we do? Well, um Thanks for that, Brian. I think, if, if you don't mind, I'd like to, I know we talked about a few things that we wanted to cover. First is is what you just asked, how do we find these borrowers? Then we're going to talk about some some ways that, some tools that, that Angel Oak has put together that can help you qualify these borrowers. And then thirdly is is some tools, some marketing assistance that, that we, Angel Oak, can provide to you. So those, those, those are the kind of three things that I just wanted to bring that up. Brian, make sure we hit all, all those because I know we can kind of get talking and, and uh, get off topic a little bit. But, and the other thing is, is for everybody, I think it's important to understand um, what subprime maybe used to be and what subprime is today. Um, and, and really, subprime really isn't in our current vernacular. But, you know, we remember the pre-crisis, uh, Alt-A, subprime lending. It was huge. It, it didn't have, um, there, there wasn't a lot of reg regulatory limitations. Um, and it was really, it, it was a, a big piece of the market. I think uh, at its peak, it was over 600 billion just in subprime per year, annual er originations. And, uh, you know, we're looking at right now a market of non-QM, non-agency of just like about 2 billion. So, you know, the 600 is not right, but 2 isn't right either. And so the, really the opportunity here is that we're looking, thinking, Typically, over time, t this non-QM market is at non-agency non 10% of the market. So if you're at a $1.5 trillion uh, business, that takes you to about $150 billion in annual originations. And that's, that's reasonable. And like I said, we're at two. So there's very few industries that have this, or, or very few segments that have this kind of growth opportunity. So I just, I'm encouraged about the, you know, the large number of people that wanted to participate today. Um, please ask questions because we're here to help. If, if we don't get it, something that you want to um, learn more about uh, addressed during this call, please reach out uh, after the fact and uh, we'd be happy to, to talk to you further. So, um, but with that, kind of back to your question, Brian, where, where do we get, where do we find these borrowers? And I, and I do think that that's pretty important. Um, and, you know, first and foremost, which when you're on, um, uh, hold on. Is that is that still on your screen? It is. It, 
Okay, the full screen or is it something yep. that's? It, it was the full screen before. Okay, all right. So I'll. Uh, sorry about that go. technology okay. problems. All right, so we'll, we'll go this way. So you know, first and foremost, I think it's really important for everyone to 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 focus on realtors. Realtors are you know the gatekeepers. They've learned over the years, uh, you know, post crisis that if a borrower is not qualified for an agency loan, they need to not really spend a lot of time with them. Um, and and so as we've developed this, Angel Oak, we've been in this space for over three years now. Uh, as realtors, and there might even be some realtors on this call today, as they become aware uh, of the, these programs and products being available, they're pretty excited about it because it allows them to ex, ex, you know expand the the base of, of potential buyers and like you said Brian there's lots and lots of buyers out there that, that are perfectly qualified they just don't meet the the GSE's uh, guidelines and and their requirements so you know that that's one thing that you know focusing on realtors uh, we've got some some loan officers who've used some some efforts like going to open houses of maybe even higher priced homes because you think about the the Fannie Mae guidelines they're certainly tight, but then when you get into jumbo financing, those guidelines get even tighter. So if you started focusing on jumbo loans, we, we do a lot and a lot of jumbo lending, and that's because of the, the even tighter guidelines that are placed on those loans. Um, the other thing with realtors, if, if you use your uh, availability of non-QM products, you know, I think everybody on this call, you, you just want a shot at a loan. And that's all you want a realtor to give. You know, a lot of times they already have a relationship. They might have an agreement or some, something in place where they have to use a preferred lender. But so really all you want is a shot. And if you go in with offering non-QM products, non-prime products to borrowers who don't typically qualify or won't qualify for an agency loan, that's your opportunity to get that shot. And once you get that shot, then you can show them how good you are and, and how easy it is to close these loans, and they're probably going to get start sending more business your way. So, realtors, I think is is an obvious one, but but one that you should really focus on. Uh, the second one here really is is builders, um, builders, um, first time home buyers. Uh, you know, a lot of times these buyers are, are have been renters. They want to buy a home. They weren't aware of the impact that their credit and their credit history could have on their ability to buy a home. They've got, they've got the income, they've got the assets, but they just don't have the credit to go along with it. And that's where these non-QM loans can, can come into play to, to help these builders out and help them capture every single potential buyer that walks in the door. Um, so you, typically good income, typically good assets, but credit may not always be there. Uh, the other piece is that builders are, you know, a, an opportunity for people to maybe move up uh, in the um, in the housing world, and, and then they find out that they've, that, you know, again they get into a jumbo loan scenario, and their credit does not qualify for, for jumbo loans. And uh, you know, using non-QM as a, as a good alternative will really help you capture that. Um, and then also uh, some of these builders, they they might have their own uh, mortgage companies. And those mortgage companies may or may not even offer uh, non-QM loans through their through their their own lenders. So uh, you know you can you can uh, network with loan officers at these builder builder accounts and, and get leads that way. So um, I think builders builders as we see the the market to continue to improve, uh, the builder business continues to flourish. Uh, lead generators I, and, and providers. I think that's uh, that's something that anyone on this call, if you want to really differentiate yourself, if if you ha currently have a lead lead gen source, um, speak to them about what they do with borrowers who have potential dinged dinged up credit. Um, I think it's pretty interesting that a lot of people don't know, but today 30. 34% of Americans have a FICO score below 620. So you're looking at a third of the third a third of the country has a credit score below 620. And those that have been in the business know when you get below 620, finding financing for those borrowers is becomes difficult. And then there's another, I think it's about another 15, 
50 percent. So for a total of 50 percent of borrowers have a FICO under 680. Um, so you, you, you talk about that population. That is a huge number of of just individuals that are not necessarily going to fit into the Fannie Fannie Mae uh, guidelines. And when they run a DU, they find out that hey, this is not going to work. So you know, you, you, if you go and talk to these lead, lead generators um, and providers about what they do with those leads, there's very few people that even want those kind of leads. They want the the creme de la creme. But if you if you participate in that space, what you find out is that there's a lot of people getting these same leads, and so your competition is is extremely stout. Um, through lead generation sources, but if you talk to them about, hey, give give me some some borrowers that that are fallout that maybe have had some type of credit issue, uh, or they have lower scores, uh, two things will happen. One is they'll probably give you a good deal on those leads, uh, since no one's buying them, no one has bought them, uh, and, and we're now starting to see some people get into that. But if you do it now, you'll be one of the first. That actually participates uh, with these borrowers, and, and the second piece is that because there's very few uh, playing in the space, so to speak, it's not competitive. You know, you can actually be that source and that that consultant to the borrowers who might have a more uh, you know, find themselves in a more difficult situation to qualify for a loan. So, you know, I just I think not not ignoring lead generators is is really important. Uh, another piece that in this current environment, you know, thinking about what's happening in the market with rising rates and things like that, uh, debt consolidation has always been a, a large portion of, of non-agency lending. So lead generators can really work and, and, and narrow it down and focus in on those borrowers who have equity in their house, but maybe they don't have the credit score to qualify for an agency loan. So you know, those are the kind of things that, that you, can, you can actually find some really great opportunities for people to roll in some of their credit card debt and other debt. And again, in a rising rate environment, those, those debts are just going to continue to, to grow uh, and, and cost borrowers more money that they're going to be more interested in, and more, um, more aggressive in wanting to, to refinance, refinance those debts. Okay. Um, another, and, and uh, some, someone made a comment, I understand, I'm sorry that you can see the other, um, the other slides on the screen, it's, uh, I've got a dual screen here, so I was trying, trying to manage through that, but um, uh, other loan officers, there are other loan officers that just do not participate in this space, so uh, loan officers that maybe work for a big bank is, a, is a kind of an easy example. Um, and those banks are not going to offer non-QM loans at all. Uh, you can get referrals from your friends, from others in the business that you've worked with. Network with them and show show them these loans that that you're able to qualify borrowers on. Um, that you know they they would otherwise just have to pass. They would certainly rather refer them to somebody, a trusted source like yourself, than just tell a borrower no. You know, thereby finding a solution for those borrowers. You also have LOs that they they simply won't I, I guess they won't bother with with non-agency loans because there there's a bit of a mis uh, a misperception that non-QM loans are harder than an agency loan and I'm here to tell you that is just not the case you know we we require income documentation asset documentation just like you do on your on, on all your loans so. Um, you know, credit issues, we address those up front, and we're going to talk more about that as we go through this. Um, but, uh, you know, find that loan officer that just really doesn't even want to mess with these kind of loans, and you can be that resource. Um, and, and the other good thing that I think about leads from other LOs is that they're very, they're pretty well qualified as far as being a good lead. Now, whether or not you can qualify them into a non-QM program, that's something that you'll have to become the expert that you can we can help you with. But as far as being a lead for someone who actually wants to get a loan, that's a really, really good source. And uh, when I talk to our customers who've closed loans, who've gotten leads from other LOs, 
that was one of their comments that when they get when they get those leads, those borrowers are, are ready to move. And chances are they've been told no a time or two. So when you bring a solution to them, they're they're you know that much more excited about it. And and really uh, finally, I think uh, from a just a sourcing perspective, uh, accountants and financial planners. You know these are the these are the trusted referral bases that uh, you know a lot of people may or may not um, uh, work in this space. But if you kind of position yourself with an accountant or financial advisor that, hey, if, you, if they have a, a client that has a difficult situation, um, whatever that situation may be, then you sh you want to be the outlet for that that borrower and that, that financial planner to refer them over to you. Um, and then once you've done, as I said earlier, once you've done the difficult deal, then you can kind of go back to them and ask for a, a better stream or a, a more consistent stream of leads from other clients. Uh, what, one example is is accountants. You know, accountants are the ones that are doing taxes for these self-employed borrowers. I think the last time I looked, there's there's right around 15 million self-employed borrowers in the United States, um, or self-employed individuals in the United States, all obviously potential borrowers. Um, but if they have a, an aggressive accountant that writes off a lot of their business debt. And business expenses on their on their tax returns, which is what good accountants do, that's going to make it much more difficult for a borrower, self-employed borrower, to qualify for a mortgage. And you know, one of our most popular non-QM programs is our bank statement loan, and that is made specifically for that self-employed borrower. Um, and and going to accountants and sharing with them that you have that type of product and program available. Uh, is really going to help open some doors uh, for you. Yeah, you know, so, I, I'll, tell you what, I, I'll tell you what I, you know, we're, we're going over, you know, all these folks that you can go to. I think one of the one of the biggest advantages that a loan officer is going to have um, is is what you're just touching on here, Tom. Is that not everybody's going to do this? Not everybody is engaging these Alte, you know, subprime type of loans. And so uh, you as a loan officer, when you're going out there and you're trying to find realtor business as you need to be doing in a purchase market environment, what are you going to say? Are you going to say, I've got great rates, so everybody else does? Are you going to say, um, I'll close your deal on time, I'm a great communicator, everyone says that? You know, I'm a direct endorsement lender, I'm Fan lender, I'm Fannie, Freddie, Jenny, you know, I'm, no, they don't even know what that means. Um, you need to have things in your quill right now that are going to distinguish you amongst your competition. I think the fact that not everybody is doing these type of loans is probably the biggest benefit to everybody on this call. You become that lender who does these type of deals. And so it distinguishes you amongst your competition, which is going to be more fierce in 2017. So I love everything that you're saying here. A couple of points yeah, here. Right. I, just, I did want to say one more thing real quickly is um, yeah, sure. uh, we, we are – this is a wholesale lender, okay? So for those uh, who are asking, is this retail or wholesale, this is in fact wholesale. The reason why you're on this call is we want to make sure that we get a package out to you so you could start doing using the Angel Oak products going forward. So I just want to be clear. This is a wholesale deal. And, uh, and uh, just one quick question as I'm kind of checking these. Um, we yeah. had somebody who was mentioning, and maybe I'm jumping the gun here, but we had somebody who was asking, uh, what if you have somebody who's paying cash as a renter? Is that an issue for you? Yeah, uh, you know, that that's a factor, but it's not a not a factor that we can't get get around. Um, you know, we we look at you know, one thing that is different in in what and how Angel Oak does loans is is we take a very common sense approach. We manually underwrite every single loan. So that that scenario, if everything else about the borrower makes sense, we're gonna you know we're gonna work with you up front to help you get uh, get these borrowers uh, in, into homes. So uh, you know any specific guideline, we we look at it in its entirety, not one little piece of it, but what's the rest of uh, of the situation with that borrower? Okay, that's good. Com common sense underwriting is is a is a common term we use. But, but no yeah, in the industry. Yeah, well, what a concept, huh? Uh, but but you're you know I, I really like your point, Brian. That that this allows you to bring something new. You know, if if you're going to call on accountants and financial advisors, advisors and realtors and builders, you know, we're giving you some tools that you can take to them that no one else is bringing to them. And uh, as you pointed out, the fact that you're on the call today 
shows that you're going to take, you know, make make the extra effort to do more to get into these doors. So uh, that that's what this is all about. So good stuff, good questions. Um, all right, so changing gears a little bit, I wanted to um, talk about some tools that we can help you pre-qualify these borrowers. Um, and so I'd kind of like to draw your attention to, to the computer and, and I'm going to walk you through some things. Again, ask, ask questions. Um, Brian, if there's something that you feel like I'm, I'm running over that I should slow down, please, please help me. But this is our, our main website, uh, angeloakms.com. And yes, we are a wholesale and a correspondent lender. So we are not a retail, uh, a, a retail lender. But so on our main page, there's some quick links right here, and this is where I'm going to probably direct you uh, during during most of this. But I, I want to start with something called our quick quote. Um, and a lot of times, um, you know, in the world of communication and text messaging, people want really quick answers. So we developed this tool that we refer to as quick quote that allows you to put in a few pieces of information about a borrower and decide or determine whether or not that borrower, if there's an opportunity for that borrower to get a loan. And again, this is quick, this is high level, but it's a fabulous place to start and for you to kind of get an idea of what uh, someone's eligibility might look like. So when you go to this page, as you can see here on the top, there's just a hand, handful of information and it's all drop down boxes. So first we start with the credit score. What range is the borrower's credit score? So I'll fill it out as we go. Let's just say the borrower has a 682 score. Then we're looking at loan amounts. All right, this is going to be over the Fannie cutoff of the 417, although I know that's changed. So um, 417 to 750. Uh, what loan to value? Let's just say 75%. And then housing history, that's kind of an important one for us because a lot of uh, borrowers that we see have had some type of recent housing event. Um, so let's just start by saying in the last 12 months and, and really in the last 24 months they haven't had any problems. So you click that and as soon as that happens, options start showing up for you down here on the bottom. So I've, I've input one, two, three, four pieces of data and now it shows which programs might be available. So one, and, and these program names really aren't going to mean a lot to you. It's, it's just how we refer to these programs. but you can see for Portfolio Select, we requested a 75% loan. We will actually, based on this information here, we will go up to a 90% loan to value. And here is, here is a rate for that borrower. So it's right here at your fingertips. You know, you can kind of start, start the process of having a conversation with your borrower. If they're sitting across the table from you, you can pull it up and say, yep, it looks like I might have a home with Angel Oak. Um, Here's some other requirements, bankruptcy seasoning, 24 months, housing event, foreclosure, something like that, 24 months, and then reserves, six months. And the nice thing about this is that you can continue to kind of play around. So, oh, well, we can do, we can do a higher LTV. Let's, let's put in 80 and see what that looks like. Okay, so there's 80. It prices it for you, uh, still showing you what that 90% is, similar requirements. Um, okay, well, oh, this wasn't a purchase, this was a, a rate and term. Okay, there are my terms. How about a cash out for somebody? Super, 80% cash out for this borrower is something that we can do. So again, you can change occupancy, the income documentation, we can go to self-employed uh, bank statements. Okay, we've got a bank statement, program, cash out, 80%. And it's, and it's right there at your fingertips. So. Something that we, uh, all of our customers work with this tool on a daily basis. This is really, this is where it starts. Now again, this is high level information. This is not a pre-qualification. This is not, we, Angel Oak will do this loan, but it gives you a, a good frame of reference to, uh, to get started uh, down the road. So. Again, we believe this is a pretty powerful tool and something that you can take advantage of. I also want to show you something um, that, that we have a lot of people doing because what, what I'm showing you is when you're at a computer, uh, you know, a laptop, a desktop, what have you, but you have to be on a computer. 
But those that have mobile phones and smartphones, which I would assume almost everyone on this call has, you can put a, a quick link on your phone to our quick quote. So I'm just going to run you through this real quick. If this, this is for iPhone specifically. Don't have all the different uh, types of operating systems on here. But for an iPhone, you open up Safari, you type in angeloakms.com, you'll see this, uh, this right here. You click on the bottom on Quick Quote, just like we did on the website. Very simple, follow along. Then when you get to Quick Quote, this is what it looks like online, or excuse me, from your smartphone. At the bottom, you'll see this little box with an arrow. You click on that, and then it gives you some options of what you want to do with it. And on the bottom, it says Add to Home Screen. So you can click that, click Add to Home Screen. It will ask you what you want to call it, and it's going to pop up already for you, quick quote form. You hit Add right here on the top, and before you know it, you have an app on your phone called Quick Quote. And when you quick, click on that from your phone, it'll take you right to the, the Quick Quote tool. So you can do this at an open house. You can do this while you're talking to a realtor. You can do this wherever, wherever you are, just at the, the, uh, you know, the click of a button. So again, it's something that I think is, is a nice little resource for you. And if, and if you want us to send those uh, instructions out, or have any other questions about it? Happy to answer those. I got a question. Uh, you're we're talking about LTV. Can your um, down payment? Can it be gift funds or down payment assistance money? Or do you need uh, gift funds? Gift funds, absolutely. Yeah, we're we're looking for borrowers that have assets or access to assets. So we allow a hundred percent gift funds uh, on our programs. That's good. That's really cool. Uh, what are your turn times right now? We are uh, 24 to 48 hours in underwriting and, and the same to, to get closing docs out. Okay. And, I, I, again, I know I'm jumping the gun here a little bit, but uh, just as questions are coming in, I want to make sure we get these answered while they're hot. Um, we sure. have somebody specifically asking about having a rep in Nevada. Um, I, do you have account reps, I would assume, for most areas of the country? Yes, yeah. absolutely. We're, we're licensed in 34 states today, and we actually we have a – an account executive in Las Vegas, and I will show everyone uh, how to how to find those reps in just a second. How about that? Okay. And by the way, just to let everybody know, we're going to have a a package sent out to everybody on this call probably in the next ten or fifteen minutes or so. So we're going to make sure that you can in fact get in touch with these guys. Um, now, this is a uh, Valencia Pounders. I want to let you know that I will. Are you licensed in Florida? Uh, absolutely. Okay, so Valencia yes. Pounders is a real estate agent who's on right now who's looking to find a lender who will work with her with one of her tenants. Valencia, I will – when this thing is over, I will reach out to you, and we will make sure that we get an Angel Oak qualified loan officer to work with you on your deals. So I just wanted to throw that, that out there as well. That, that, that would be terrific. Um, good stuff. So, yes, let me uh, – in fact, I'll show you right here since it's on it uh, – on our, again, on our, on our uh, website, we have a contact us page, and right here is find an AE. And uh, it'll pull up a map, and you can see where AEs are, where we're licensed, um, just by clicking on the, the little plus signs. So here, I think was uh, Vegas was one of the questions there. It's Michael Irving, our account executive in Las Vegas. All right, so let's go back to, um, back to the home page. Um, want to just show you real quickly after the quick quote is completed um, and I'll do, just do this again real quick um, the next step would be simply right here pre-qualification request and that will take you to the next page which is where you actually get hooked up with your account executive to help you structure this loan and for them to actually look at the credit report you fill out a little information um, you upload 1008, 1003 credit report, hit submit, it goes directly to our account executive. They're going to get back to you certainly in less than 24 hours with, with what kind of loan programs uh, we might be able to, to, to provide for that borrower. Okay. Um, another thing that I'd like to show you is uh, I, I mentioned earlier our, our bank statement program. One tool that we've really are used all the time. Bank statements now make up 
probably 25% of our volume, but uh, there's, there is some concern that bank statement loans are, are too difficult to do, and we can, we can share with you testimonials of our customers that have closed these loans, and we provide the tools to you to, to make it so easy. And here is, here is our worksheet, and literally you start and you select the month, let's say we're starting in December of last year, and it fills it, populates for it, you populates all the months for you, you put in the income for each month that's found on the bank, uh, bank statements, and then it'll tell you your overall income for that two-year period, what income we're going to use, and you can plug that in and see if that works for your borrower. So again, I, I just think these resources are something that, that make the experience and, and the process of doing loans with, with Angel Oak a, a lot easier. So again, this is something that um, we would provide to you when, uh, when, when you're looking at a bank statement loan. Um, okay. Do, do you do, um, what about manufactured homes? We do not do manufactured homes. Okay. Um, we, I keep getting questions about gift funds on here. Um, what is not allowable for gift funds? I mean, how do you have to source and season them? So, um, uh, just, yeah, we, we, we need, we need a gift letter and then documentation of the funds being put into the, the borrower's account. Okay. So, like an FHA deal. Pretty simple. Yes. Pretty simple. Okay. Yep. Okay. Anything else there, Brian? Um, yeah, we got a whole bunch of stuff. Um, okay. So we, uh, what about seconds? Anything going on with seconds? We, we actually have some, some seconds available, but right now the pricing on a single loan is, is better. So we, we do combos ourselves. We allow institutional seconds. So if you have uh, you know, a local bank or someone for a borrower who would be willing to give them a, a second, we, we are okay with that, certainly. Uh, and, and, and I would say, why would you want to do seconds anyways? Um, okay, uh, what about prepayment penalties? Uh, that, that's a great question, and that's something that's, that's kind of about the, the new non-QM and the new non-prime, is that any owner-occupied or second, second homes are not allowed to have a prepayment penalty on these. So, you know, we've always considered non-prime loans to be a Band-Aid loan until a borrower can get their situation improved so that they can get a, um, you know, a, gov a government agency loan. Uh, these have no prepayment penalties on them. So if you're able to close these, you know, you're kind of building your pipeline for a refinance 18, 24 months down the road. So uh, no, no prepaid penalties. Uh, some of our non-owner occupied properties or loans do, do actually have a pre, uh, prepayment penalty on them, but, but no owner ops. Okay. And just to let you know, uh, Valencia, I'm going to send Bill over to you. So how great would this be? Somebody's actually getting a deal out of this whole thing. So Bill, I'm going to hook you up with Valencia when this is all said and done. I've been looking at that. Uh, yes, this webinar <laughs> and slideshow is going to be sent out to everybody, Rebecca. Um, again, what is not allowed for gift funds? Who do we need to show for where the money is coming from? Gift funds, think FHA, guys. I think that's kind of the angle on it. Yeah. Um, yep. Are, do you have any intent? Right, so do you have any intentions of moving into manufactured home or rural properties? Uh, rural properties we lend on, um, just not manufactured homes. It's that, that's that's probably not not a space that we're. You know, I would I wouldn't think of non QM or non agency when it gets into um, unique or difficult properties. That's that's not really the lending that we do. We do, I would say, difficult borrowers. Difficult transactions, but not the actual property itself. You want you want the. I mean, if you're going to be doing difficult loans, you want to make sure that your collateral is is a good piece of collateral. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, I, don't know if this <laughs> I don't know if this pertains, but um, uh, we've got Bo who's asking how many taxes are required for foreign nationals these days. Are you doing anything with foreign nationals? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, foreign nationals are a, a big, uh, you know, pretty fairly big program for us. We offer a seventy five percent loan to value. So, you know, someone who's, uh, you know, has a foreign national that wants to put less money down, we, we have a really good product and be happy to, to share more information with, with someone uh, specifically about that. Uh, this one might be more for an underwriter, but I find it interesting as, a, as I've been looking at student loans lately. What's a DTI limit and how do you handle student loans in deferment? Um, gosh, that, that is, you're right, that's getting kind of down in the weeds. Uh, 
uh, about specific guidelines, but in general, our our DTIs um, are about a 40% front end and a 45 back end, and you know up to a 50% back back end ratio when it makes sense. So um, exactly how we handle student loans, I, I wouldn't want to give the wrong information on that one, Brian. Okay, and uh, this again, we might be uh, jumping ahead here, but Scott says um, where, and and I get this because I was this type of guy, Scott. But he wants to know where he can go ahead and access your full underwriting guidelines if he wants to go in and start to kind of split hairs and, you know, pick through the minutia. Is there a way that they can look at all of your guidelines? Well, I'll tell you that the uh, in order to access our guidelines and matrices and all that, you, you have to be an approved broker. So why don't we kind of just change change in gears to that real quickly. And so, again, on our on our website, we have a broker package. It's right here. You can download the package. Um, here it is, the application is right here online. If you are a loan officer with an organization that is already approved with us, which we have, um, uh, which we have thousands of, of approved brokers, all you would need to do is fill out this broker use, user access request. And that really is just a form where we add you as the LO into our system. You'll get a username and a password, and then you'll, you'll be able to, um, uh, to, to access all of our guidelines and matrices. Okay. And, well, and like I said, everybody's going to have that link that's sent out to them. So just check your emails when we're all done with this. Yep, absolutely. The other thing that I did want to spend one, one, uh, you know, just a couple minutes showing is that when you get approved with us through that broker package, and I've clicked on the login button here, um, you'll get a, an e you'll use your email address and you'll set up a, uh, a, uh, I'm sorry, password, but. So I wanted to show you just some broker flyers. I think it's really important that you market these pro programs, that you're, it's, it's not simply a when it falls out, you know, I've got a home for it, but you take these programs. You know, we talked about the referral sources, uh, realtors and builders and things like that. These are flyers that, that you have access to when you are approved with Angel Oak. And I think, you know, I'll just click through a couple of them so you can just take a look and see what they look like. But... You know, right here you would put your company logo, so you are the one offering this product. But you've got you've got some high level one day out of foreclosure short sale. You know that that kind of just speaks to that that real estate agent who's lost some loans because they find out after they've made an offer on a property or after they've spent many days showing houses to a borrower that oh yeah I forgot to tell you I had a foreclosure on an investment property about a year and a half ago, and then they find out that they can't get any type of loan. So, um, you know, these are flyers, they're for you. You customize them, you put your information in, you print them, you email them out, you do with it whatever you want from a marketing standpoint. Um, a couple other good ones that I, I think are really strong is um, this bank statement flyer. A lot of people are using this. Uh, again, with, with as many people, self-employed borrowers and little to no access to loans, bank statements are, are on the rise, but it just gives some high level, no tax returns, credit scores start at 620, but you put your logo, you put your information, and then it's your your flyer. I, I, I think this is, I mean, we had a couple of questions and I wanted to segue in here, but people were asking, do we have white label flyers? And in fact, you do. I want to go back to what I just said earlier, and again, I, I hate to parachute in, but I don't want this point to be overlooked. You as a loan officer right now, if you don't have something that distinguishes you from your competition, it's going to be a long 2017. It really is. And I talk with LOs all the time, and they don't know how to go in and speak with a real estate agent anymore. I mean, this I talk with agents all the time. They say lenders never go in and speak with them. I mean, you're going to go in and bring them donuts. All right, you can either give them you know, high blood pressure and cholesterol problems, or you can bring them a way of closing more deals. I mean, what do we want to do? So as a loan officer, I mean, I just make this an actionable item right now. You know, go ahead, get these flyers, go loiter in real estate offices, hand these out, start offering products your competition isn't doing. This is how you're going to succeed in a much rougher 2017. I love these flyers. I think they're killer. Yep. And uh, getting approved with us takes two or three days, Brian. And as soon as you're approved, you have access to these flyers. So, you know, this is Thursday. You can start marketing this. Uh, as soon as next week, if if uh, if you want to. So, New Year's resolutions: go out and, and sell this stuff. Um, okay, so I have uh, a couple. I have a. Oh, did am I interrupting? Can I ask a couple questions? No, nope, no. Nope. 
Go, go right ahead, Ron. Okay, so Stephanie says, uh, uh, do you lend to foreign nationals? I think we answered that. Living in the United States, only have an ITIN and file U.S. tax returns, U.S. bank accounts, et cetera. Uh, no, foreign nationals? Not, not going to do those. No, our foreign nationals are those that, that live and work outside of the U.S. Uh, Tracy Kelly, yes, this is why we're here. Do they uh, have correspondent relationships available for brokers? That, that's why we're here. Um, uh, do they? Do well, I think I think Brian was the question. Do we have correspondent relationships? Yeah. So, yes, we absolutely do. We have a correspondent. Um, so, so that's the same thing. We'll we'll get you hooked up if you'd rather be the lender in the transaction. You'll still work with us. We'll still um, approve these loans, underwrite these loans, uh, taking as much risk away from you. But yes, we do have a correspondent relationship. And I know Tracy Kelly. I know her. So yeah, Tracy, you want to hook up with these guys? Um, okay, so um, uh, do they do asset depletion? Uh, yes, we have an asset depletion. I would tell you that it's we, we use asset depletion to help somebody get over the hump, so to speak. If it's someone whose sole source of income is their assets, those are those are pretty difficult. But we we do have uh, a way to use the assets to, to benefit the borrower. Hey, here's a good one. I've seen this a couple of times. Jenny Bloom. She says, "What about a gift to equity?" Mom selling the house to the kid, it appraises at two hundred thousand. Wants to give twenty percent down. Is that okay? Yes, we allow a gift of equity. Good, that's big. Uh, yes, this webinar is being recorded. Oh, um, <laughs> we've actually kind of overlooked this. What are you guys paying? So right now, as of today, we are in a borrower paid environment, uh, which means the borrower has to pay your fees. Uh, we're, we're getting very close to having a lend, being in a lender paid environment, but as we've developed this market, uh, the, the financing or the, the, the value of the loans is, is continuing to evolve and, and, and improve, which is, which is the good news. So today, you would actually charge your fees up front to the borrower. Going forward in the near future, uh, we'll, we'll be in a lender paid environment. Um, this might be something you probably already spoke with before, but when is your third securitization going to be complete on your foreign national program? Um, well, I think we're kind of confusing a couple of things. There, there, there are, uh, so we have a, um, an affiliated company, Angel Oak Capital, that is going to be issuing uh, a third securitization uh, very, very soon. So I think that was question one. I, I don't know how that ties into the foreign national piece of it. I didn't quite get that. Okay. Yeah, I, I didn't either. Um, what's, <laughs> what's, the, what's the highest LTV that you guys will go? 90%. 90%. Okay. And uh, we've got Matthew who's asking, how can he find out if his company is already approved? I would just go and say, are we approved? I mean, is there – that would – I would assume to be the way to do it, right? Um, Brian, if you can give me his contact information, I, you know, I don't want to keep everyone – but, but we can we can actually get you know get back to him this afternoon and let him know. All right, Matthew Delay, we will get back with you. Uh, and the question that um, uh, Robert said, he goes, no, not what, not your LTV. What is the maximum CLTV you'll do? So if you have um, a, a second backing it up with somebody else, will you go higher than ninety? Yes, we'll allow uh, with a institutional second. A, you know, want to be clear, no no seller seconds. Okay. Institutional seconds uh, up to ninety five. Ninety-five. Well, what's the highest DTI you guys will go? Um, highest would be fifty. I so you're going to go as fifty. And uh, do yeah. you have a do you have a timeline on your uh, lender paid comp? Uh, the near future, it's hard to put a put a date on that, but but it, it's it's coming very soon. Uh, I got to tell you, I absolutely love these questions because th these are like so just like such loan officers. <laughs> <laughs> it cracks me up. I, I do love them, but it, well, you know, everybody's got to get paid. But you know, this this is a way for people to get paid on loans that if if you don't offer the programs, I you know, you pretty much guaranteed you're not going to get paid. So well, yeah, these are great questions. The, the nature of a lot of these questions are you can almost see I've been burned trying to do that before. Therefore, I'm going to ask this question. Uh, it just cracks me up because I, I've totally been there. But uh, this would be a case in point. Kimberly says, uh, bank statement programs, do they require business licenses? Uh, they, they require proof of self-employment. Can you expand on that? So we have to prove that. 
we have to document that someone's been self-employed for two years. That would be pretty hard to do without a license, wouldn't it? I, I'm i thinking so. Okay. Um, bank, uh, do you accept business bank statements rather than personal bank statements? Yes, we do. We do okay. business or personal. The, the, um, the structure of those loans is, is, is slightly different, and, and our uh, sales sales team would, would it help walk you through that. Uh, gift funds, can it come from somebody other than a family member? I think we did cover that, didn't we? Um, needs to be a family member. What about a close friend? Cousins are allowed. Okay. Um, <laughs> no, right, I didn't say that. Right. right. Um, <laughs> Um, what about a non warrantable condos? Yes, we do. Uh, we do non warrantable condos, um, and again, that's that, the, the, we have some specifics around those, and would be happy to share that with somebody. Uh, I think this is a pretty fair question. Luke says, "What are you seeing in terms of your average uh, time from actually getting your prequal to closing a deal? What's the whole soup to nuts average that you guys are dealing with?" Are you, yeah, that I mean that that's a great question. I would I would tell you that we've we've closed loans in as little as fourteen days. Um, so it's really kind of the 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 completeness of the file and this you know it takes us two days to underwrite it and then we get conditions and we issue CDs and uh, appraisals completed and all that and we're ready to go. We our average turn time from start to finish is is twenty one days. Wow. So. We are we. One of the things that we understand, first of all, is that about ninety percent, eighty-five percent of what we do are purchase transactions, and generally, we're not the first loan. <laughs> you know, they didn't start with it, the intent of it coming to Angel Oak. So there's a purchase date on that contract that was signed. So the loan kind of went sideways somewhere else, and then we get it. That purchase date, contract date, has not changed. So we are really, really focused on speed and service, and I know people say that all the time, but that's really that's how we operate, and and we understand because we have to operate that way. So uh, we we have we get feedback from our customers on a very regular basis that that's what we provide. <laughs> I love this one. Jeremy Bloom says he's sending over two loans ASAP with a bunch of exclamation marks. I says he's been looking for the. He said he's been looking for this program for five months. You know, in fact, I really I challenge every loan officer. I want you to think about some of these deals you've closed you, that you've turned down over the last six months. You might have a deal or two. You might have ten thousand dollars sitting in in loans that you never looked up. So I would encourage everybody to look at what they've done and say, hey, do we uh, possibly have some deals in here that are just waiting to be done? So I think that's killer. Um, also, Tori says, uh, what are your lender fees? We have a, a fourteen ninety seven administrative fee, and that's that's our that's our fee. Uh, one more time, what was that? Fourteen. Fourteen ninety seven. Fourteen ninety seven. Okay. Yes. Um. Okay, so we're getting a lot of questions about the flyers. So again, I just want to make this very clear to everybody: if you fill out now, and correct me if I'm wrong here, Tom, but if they fill out the broker package. Do they get the flyers at that point or after they're approved? How and, and for folks that are approved right now, what do they need to do to get these um, flyers? There's a lot of interest in that. So, uh, okay, no, that's that really good question. So, if you're approved already, um, you you have a username and a password to, to access these flyers, and you would simply go to our homepage and click sign in. Um, and I'll I'll show you that again. Uh, let's see. So right here, come on computer. So on our on our homepage, it has login in the top right hand corner right here. So if you're already approved, you click that, you sign in, and you'll see broker flyers um, as as one of the drop down boxes when you're signed in. And then that that list of, of flyers I was just showing you uh, right here it says broker flyers. That's how you would access them. Okay. I, and again, like I said, I would encourage everybody to go do this today. I mean, if you have the ability, when you go out to lunch, stop by a couple of real estate offices and see if you can check a couple deals out of the trees by handing some flyers out. You know, I mean, the, here's, here's the thing, guys. You go in there, you go into a real estate office. Here, I'm going to digress for a moment. And Frank told me not to do this, but I'm going to do it anyways. Um, 
when I was a when I was a lender, I always kind of looked at myself and I thought, okay, here's this wholesale account rep who's coming into my office. If he closes ten deals a month, he's going to get fired. If I close ten deals a month, I'm a superstar. What's the difference between me and that wholesale account rep? And I really did. I thought about this a ton. And the difference is, is these wholesale account reps, well, they're dealing with loan officers. Loan officers, you're dealing with real estate agents. It's the same type of thing. A good wholesale account rep is somebody who would always loiter in your office. You know, I had that guy who was constantly in front of me. You got a deal. You got a deal. You got a deal. And you would give them deals. And so I always thought to myself, okay, how I'm going to be a great loan officer is I'm going to do the same thing that they do. I'm going to loiter in the offices of real estate agents. I'm just going to be there to pick up the deals. These flyers are super cool because it gives you that opportunity to provide a value proposition to these agents. Now, understand your average real estate agent is closing less than one half of one side of a transaction per month. It's not a sustainable income. So real estate agents really, really, really want to be able to close more deals, more so than lenders because they're fewer and far in between. If you have these type of products and you can actually go sit in real estate offices, it's not only the business that you're going to get in these Alte subprime deals. You're going to earn their business on their other deals as well. I mean, I just can't stress this enough how important it is. Yeah, Brian, I, I absolutely concur with that. We hear all the time that people use our programs to open the door and they get them regularly, but it's allowed them to get the access to all the all these realtors' loans, and that you know that's really kind of what you're after, uh, and and use these programs to open those doors. Yeah, I, I, I just I, I just know it works. I, I've seen it. I've done it. It works. And this is a place you need to be. Right. Um, and, and I just on the screen, I put my email address. So anybody who had some specific questions, uh, please jot that down and shoot me an email and um, happy to help you in any way we can. Okay, well, this is some really, really good stuff. Um, and by the way, I'm just letting you know, this is happening with or without your participation as lenders. Uh, you're going to start to see more adoption of more creative forms of financing. Um, you, you can pick and choose to be one of two. You could be the early comer or the Johnny come lately when it comes to these type of deals. Um, they're going to happen. Uh, we see it. We know it. The goal is for you and your company is you want to be the early adopters of anything that's happening because it's going to position you in the places that you need to be. Uh, Angel Oak, we've known these guys now for quite some time. Uh, we have spoke with them. We've spilled beer with them. We've gone over files together with them. Uh, they work. We work with them because they are, in fact, the real deal. These guys are great at what they do. Uh, this is a, this is somebody who you want to participate with. Not only if you're a broker, but if you're, you know, a regional banking operation, there's stuff that I know everyone wants to funnel everything over to, you know, to the bank, but there's going to be deals that simply do not fix or fit. You're going to need to shave some of the corners off the squares to get them to go into round holes, right? And so Angel Oak really affords you this opportunity. They create deals for you. They create relationships for you. They've got marketing for you. Um, super, super proud to be a part of what these guys are doing right now. So I would encourage everybody, everybody on this call, if you are not working with Angel Oak, you want to bring this to your company, you want to tell them that this is something that you need to do so you can be competitive in 2017. Because like I said, this is happening with or without your participation. Yep. Agreed. Awesome. All right. So we will let everybody go. And by the way, check your emails. We will make sure that we get Tom's email address in there as well. So any questions that you have going forward, um, we want to make sure that you guys are in touch with Angel Oak. So check your emails in a couple of moments. And with that said, thank you so much on behalf of all of us. And I'll have this recording sent out to everybody. You guys have a good day. Thanks, Thanks, Brian. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.